Visco girls. With fantastic wigs, fabulous heels, and desirable dresses. It's very nice. Look at the back of it. Stunning. There's a new craze for boys. Are they real guys? Yes. I know like a woman and I love it. Yeah. Drag. Love it. Kids are bringing out their inner divas. Can you say work, work? I'm not going to wash no dishes. What are you chatting about? And strutting their stuff. One way. Let's do this. Up. Who's ready for a drag show? And with drag now a global phenomenon, <laughs> these pre-teen drag queens are ready to take on the world. It's now hitting me that hits. It's a bit strange feeling, isn't it? I can understand if they did it like, like an adult's event. It's not a sexual thing, it's a empowerment and freedom thing. That's the funny thing, everyone thinks it's always parents enforcing us. They are Good Kids in Drag. Three young boys are venturing into the world of drag. Like this is one. so nice. In the valleys of South Wales, nine-year-old Fabian has taken his first tentative steps into performing as alter ego Francesco. Done. In Spain, 11-year-old self-confessed diva Stefan is regularly performing as Laddie Gaga. At first, I'm nervous, but once I'm out there, I feel great and I turn all that nerve into power. I'm getting Pat Butcher vibes from this. And after struggling to fit into his school in Northamptonshire... Even when I had short hair, people would still call me girl. 12-year-old Leo, a.k.a. Violet Vixen, is finding new friendships in this fabulous community. <laughs> that is has got the half on. Now having broken into the world of drag at home... I think you're both brilliant. These mini divas are keen to explore how drag is celebrated all around the globe. In Corby, Leo has now been given the opportunity to meet more like-minded kids. What are you packing for, Leo? I am going to America. Why are you going to America? Because I am going to drag you tart. Are you excited about it? Yes, obviously I'm excited about it. I've never been to America or a drag event. <laughs> Dragutant is one of the only events of its kind in the world. Designed for under-18s who practice drag to perform, it takes place in Denver, Colorado. The event boasts a colossal turnout of 30 drag kids aged from 7 to 17. and they've all been invited to attend a drag brunch at a local pub to get to know each other. But even after a transatlantic flight, 12-year-old Leo still wants to look his best. I need to find out all my nails. Could you do that? And has roped in mum, Lauren, to help. I just think they're ghastly. I, I wouldn't like... I don't, she hates nails. I just don't understand it. I think about all, like, all the tasks that you have to do with these nails on. Not very hygienic, are they, I don't think. They're gorgeous. These are not dishwashing hands, are they? I'm not going to wash no dishes. What are you chatting about? Mm. Brent. <laughs> I think he feels really empowered by drag. I think it's made it easier for him to be himself. Will this be the first time that you've met so many people kind of around your age, Leo, that have the same interest? Well, I feel like Fabian is the only person who I have. The, the Fabian is the only person who I have met in person, like a drag queen, so drag kid. So it's going to be very um, different. You know, sort of meeting a lot more because there isn't that many in Corby, there's, uh, but I know that there's tons in America. But I think I'm the only one in Corby, actually. I think. Do you think the other kids may have kind of nails and stuff, or do you think...? Hopefully. I want the other kids to have nails, because then I don't look as crazy. <laughs> I'm going to show up like, hello! I'm going to have, like, 
pineapples on my fingers. I love it. Have you got my phone? Mm -hmm. Bottle of water? Yeah. Apple? Yeah. Blue inhaler? No, I'm ready. Leo is particularly keen to meet internationally known drag kids, 14-year-old Ophelia Peaches and 10-year-old Queen Lactatia. Keep you waiting. Hello. This is Lactatia. Oh, hi, Lactatia. Hi. Oh, my God, it's cool to me. Hello. <laughs> Jessica and Nemis, a.k.a. Queen Lactatia, have travelled from Canada to be part of the event. Things like Draggy Tonda are super important, especially for kids like our kids who are that age where they don't have that that network to go, that, that support group to go to. I like to think that we're building you know, a network and a community. It is so nice. Jessica and event organizer Robin became aware of Leo's drag alter ego through his social media exposure. I cried like a baby the first time I saw Violet Vixen and more with like Lauren as she's talking about how Leo was and what he was doing and what he was like and I'm there and I'm like, I'm nodding and I'm like, yes, 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 all of it. After their initial meeting, it doesn't take Robin's son Jameson long to find some common ground. So pretty. They're just a quick 10 minutes sort of. Every time I'm in drag, always. One pops off. And then every photo, I'm like this, I'm just hiding it. Because, like, I don't want to show nails. Like, I've totally lost a finger. Hi, everybody! The brunch is being hosted by well known drag artist Dixie Crystals. How many is your first time being at a drag brunch? Oh, some virgins. I love them. But we have a group here from a pageant happening tomorrow called Drag Utons. Whilst Leo gets his first taste of the American style drag, there's one element that he wasn't expecting. No matter how old the performer or audience, drag artists expect to be rewarded. In the US, it is customary that you, you tip your drag performers, you know? It's the same, like, I don't know if you have buskers in the UK, so we tip our buskers here, right? People perform. That's how they make their bread and butter. I saw a crowd enjoying someone's performance, someone's service, so they were, you know, and, and they were keeping it authentic. As part of the Draggy Tont experience, all the kids are invited to take part in a glamorous photo shoot as their alter egos. It's an opportunity for Violet Vixen, Ophelia Peaches, and Queen Lactatia to see each other in drag. What do you, do you enjoy about drag? I just like the art of like transformation, you know, being able to come from looking one way to looking another way. You always scare me whenever you turn around, you look completely different. It's a way to express yourself through getting on stage and putting on a wig and makeup. Just a way to show this is me and I'm proud of it in drag. Uh, it's not the fact that I do drag for attention, it's just the fact that I just like dress it up and I dress up because I like dress it up. It's going really, really well. It's so lovely to watch. And they're just literally having the time of their life. Dragutant also gives the mothers the opportunity to catch up about the challenges of raising boys who dream of being drag queens. This is Hamburger Mary's. They've been really supportive of all of the drag kids in Dragutant. And um, this is where Ophelia got her start. For her 13th birthday, she wanted a drag birthday. And uh, they treated my child like a princess. It was a Cinderella thing. That night it was like a light came on in my child. And driving home, he looked at me and he says, Mom, I feel the most me that I ever had. And that's how Dragutant started was because I went, my gosh, there must be other kids out there. Drag has given him a voice. I mean, he was a very different child a year and a half ago. Draggy taunt, like, lets these kids have, dra like, validation from, like, their actual peers who understand and get them. It looked to me like you were making friends with. Yeah. 
I feel, I feel he is like the most sociable, I'd say. We were all shy at first, the rest of us, honestly, including me. I was like, uh, hi, hi. Uh. It's sunny, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's really sunny. In Blackwood, South Wales. This is Francesca. Me, as a girl, but that drawing is horrible. Why is it horrible? Because, just look at that face. Ew. Nine-year-old Fabian has been experimenting with drag for three years. Turn around. And he has the full support of Mum, Rachel. What drag is for Fabian it is about creating your own character and he just loves the flamboyantness, the big hair, the dresses, the makeup. It's very nice. Look at the back of it. It's stunning. Fabian's local community have also embraced his love of drag. He knows that my friend's mum gave to me. Why do you like this wig, baby? Because it's like purple, which is my favourite colour. And it's from my neighbour, and my neighbour's really generous and kind, so... Today, his two older friends, Evie and Shania, are visiting for one of Fabian's regular makeup sessions. Don't put too much, cos I need it later. Yeah. What do you like about wearing makeup? Well, the eyeshadow colours, the different eye looks, the eyebrows. How did he start doing makeup with Evie, then? Ur and Fabian just got this nice little bond together where they both uh, just loved to, uh, you know, like sort of the makeup thing and like Fabian would go over there and rather than play with the boys like Evie's brother Harry, he would rather spend time with Evie in the house and then they both just experiment with their makeup. Have you ever worn like drag makeup and costumes to school? Yeah, I have. Did anyone like comment on it? What did they say? Fabian? What in Mother Lord are you wearing? When you started putting on makeup, did it make you kind of feel any different? It changes me to a different side in my life, technically. And it makes me really happy. Yes, have a look. I think Evie's like sort of grown with Fabian, you know, on his like little journey. Ooh! <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. One last time. When I think I look gorgeous. This looks like something my mum would do. <laughs> In Denver, Colorado. Shoes on. 12-year-old drag kid Leo is attending Dragutant, the largest event in the world for aspiring child drag artists. Are you excited about seeing them all again today? Yeah, I'm hella excited, because we got along really well. All, all of the queens of the drag bunch, we all got along really well. It was really fun. And um, how are you feeling about today? Oh, horrible. No kidding. Ah. This will be the first time that Leo has performed in a venue of this size. Oh, it's high. Oh, it's classic. I thought I was just wearing a there. <laughs> so it's a standing theatre. Hey. hey! Or are they putting seats out, or is it standing? Standing, I think. Because okay. then they could be like, yeah! The event will be hosted by seasoned drag queens Ginger Douglas and Dixie Crystals. I would love to go around the room if everybody could and just introduce yourself plus the pronouns that you prefer to go by just so that I don't screw up. And if I do, please call me out because I've been up since like 3 a.m. So I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I would love for us to kick that off. So I'll just go by Richard today. Um, they, them, or he, him is fine, yeah. Perfect, thank you. <clears throat> my name is Dante, and I go by she, her. My name is Opal, and I go by any pronouns, so. Um, well, my real, my real name's Leo. Uh, when I'm out of drag, I go by he, him. And then when I'm in drag, I'm Violet, and I go by she, her. I love the idea of, like, just everyone just being fluid. Like, there's no, like, sort of man and uh, manliness and uh, you know woman i just I, I love the idea of like that not being a thing i love the idea of a single person that's not interested in marriage not being ever asked are you going to get married or are you going to start just people just allowing to just be just be basically how many of this is your first time performing on a stage like this I feel like this 
you know, the biggest thing is, is that again, this was created for everyone to fulfill their love and passion for the art form of drag. And it's, it's meant for you guys to be on stage and live your, as RuPaul would say, your fantasy. So, you know, get out there, work the runway, have so much fun. Ophelia's mum, Robin, has spent the past year organizing the event. Latasha, you are opening the second half. So, up you get, babe. Okay. I, I always get choked up watching him perform. It's always a, it's it's always an emotional thing because like he's there, he's my my son who's on stage doing this thing, and I think it's more like everybody cheering and just seeing the reaction from the crowd. And Violet Vixen, you are our last performer, so you have to end with a bang. Are you ready? Okay. All right, so go on down there because we have to have a big finale. How do you feel about closing the show? Okay. Are you? Sure. It will all hit me when it's my time to go up, like actually go up. With only hours to go before the audience arrives. How do you I'm closing the show? The transformations into drag alter egos begin. Oh, I can't wait to see everybody in drag, oh my god. <laughs> see the hun. The performances will reflect the evolving nature of drag, featuring not only boys dressed as girls, but girls dressed as drag kings, and even females as hyper-exaggerated versions of their own gender. Mom, throw me the whites! Once their transformations are complete, for the full glitz and glamour treatment, the dragutants will be whisked away in a limo and reappear at the theatre's main entrance for their red carpet experience. You guys are so nice! But while the performers are in high spirits inside, <laughs> outside is a different matter. Shut it down. Shut it down. Protesters have gathered at the theatre's front entrance to demonstrate against the event. Yeah, this is a child pageant and they throw dollar bills at them like they're strippers. I know that we do have scheduled protesters for tonight, so. You know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, they're uneducated of what we're actually trying to do, and it's not a sexual thing, it's a empowerment and freedom thing. Some of these kids that are doing this were suicidal, and they were ready to end their lives because they didn't know who they were, and this performance space gives them a safe stage to find themselves, and if we can help save a kid's life every single day by putting on one pageant a year, then why the hell aren't we doing it everywhere, you know? Sorry, I get no. really emotional that sound like I'm gonna cry, but. I think the reason why people are more judgmental is because they have their own opinions and they feel like they have to give it out in order for that person to get better. But sometimes they don't realize that it is hate. Sometimes people are just downright evil. In order to protect the children and audience members for the event, Robin has enlisted the help of the Parasol Patrol, an organization of volunteers who use brightly colored umbrellas and a cacophony of sound to create a shield between the protesters and those attending. Like, what is so bad about little boys dressing up as girls? Like, really? Nobody bats an eye when little girls put on pants. As tensions rise out front, round the back, it's time for the drag kids to begin their limo journey from the theater's rear exit to the main doors. Like, if there's protesters, I want to hear what they say, what they're saying, but I don't, I don't take offense from it. I can understand if they did it, like, maybe, like, at a, um, like an adult's event. Absolutely. I think they might have that little bit of, like, do you know what, we shouldn't really do this in front of children. 
I suppose coming from somewhere where you kind of complain quietly about things, don't you? you like to leave anonymous, you know, bad reviews and those types of things. So I didn't think that it would happen. <laughs> As the limo circles, the parasol patrol have seen off the protesters. Protesters, protesters left <laughs> because we're amazing and they got tired. <laughs> and also, it's really hot out here, so like I don't blame them. <laughs> Who's ready for a drag show? With the protesters gone and a packed theatre, it's showtime. We thank you for coming to Dragaton 2 here at the Bluebird Theatre. Make some noise! <laughs> Tonight is about love, it's about appreciation, it's about art form and making our kids feel safe. It's about making our kids feel that they are loved, welcomed and supported in anything they want to do because on the outside Football is okay, and basketball is okay, and tennis is okay, but guess what? We are changing lives because drag is also okay. Dragutant allows the performers to showcase their own style of drag, including lip syncing, comedy performances, and more experimental acts. Like any other drag show, the audience shows their appreciation through dollar bills. Yeah, where the fuck did they go? Because there's, there's kind of many involved, is that why people kind of misconstrue it as like, you know, like sexualization of kids? Draggy Tonk was just a bunch of kids living the best life. There was nothing sexual about it or inappropriate about it. It was, you know, yes, there were adults there, but there were adults within that community that wished that they were given the opportunity to be those children that were on the stage. And that's what it was. It was adults supporting children. In the green room, Leo will be the final act of the night. Pat me as long as it stays on, I don't care then. With wig fastened, Leo is just one performance away from concluding this year's event. Are we ready for another entertainer? This beauty came all the way from the UK to be here. Yes, let's show some extra love to the one and only Violet Vixen! They explained that not only did, were tips given out, the performers, yeah, the crowd would leave shoes on the stage for the performers, uh, which meant, you know, that was a real sort of confirmation that they'd really in, like, enjoyed what, what the performer had done. Really proud of you. The reaction.
session tonight was incredible and the atmosphere was electric and it just exceeded my expectations. Is it worth coming over the Atlantic? No, absolutely worth it, yeah. Um, we just don't have that at home. Um, so for him to be part of this and meet all those kids and, and put on the performance that they all did, um, they should be all really proud of themselves. It's Pride Week in Benidorm. And the Hurst family have travelled up the coast to join the celebrations. First on the agenda, the hairdressers. Originally from the UK, nine-year-old Stefan now lives in Spain with his mum, dad, twin brother Mordecai and younger sister Connie. He's been performing his drag alter ego, Laddie Gaga, for over four years. Ready for those flashing lights, cause you know the baby guy, how you Well, I was playing the piano, but I'm getting my roots done because they're awful and I'm getting my hair coloured. Why are you getting your hair coloured? It just needed redoing and it's Pride Week, so we figured if we do out my hair for Pride Week, then everything would be fine and dandy. Oh no, here comes the burning. <laughs> Dying hair as a child is not recommended, but for this drag kid, it's worth it in the name of art. If it ain't hurting, it ain't working. We have our hair dyed in a... Um, a multitude of colours. A multitude of colours, and we do it because we're involved in these Pride events that are coming up. And we wanted to show not just Pride, but support. Support for Pride. Yeah, and, and for everything that that community, whether they know us or not, are doing for us as well. Vanity is pain, Stefan. We're all showing support yeah, for yeah, Stefan. Um, but I think, you know, we're, people see us and go, oh, Rainbow Family. That's how mm. it can be. So, yeah, it's about us walking hand in hand. But for all the support his family gives Stefan for his love of drag, it can't prevent comments from his peers. The other kids, they make fun of me because I've got an earring. And, um, and then he, every time I walk into the line um, and the other kids that are in fourth, they say, oh, it's Lady Gaga again. How does it make you feel? Uh, yeah. It can be lonely. For Stefan, attending Benidorm Pride and all the other gigs, I think he needs to be there to see that he never has to be desperate. Sure, it's it. perfect. Ah, thank you. He never has to struggle with his sexuality, with the clothes that he wears, with the makeup that he wants to wear, with whether he wants to be a boy or a girl. He never has to struggle with that because there's a, a squilly and other people doing the same thing. This is like a complete different me. <laughs> what do you think of your hair? Love it! Do you feel like you've got a good look for Pride now? Uh, yeah, I do. I feel like I won't need a wig. They've done a fabulous job. Montreal, the commercial capital of Canada. and home to one of the world's most famous drag kids. Ow! 10-year-old Nemis and his mum, Jessica. Montreal, I would say, is one of the safest and most welcoming for anyone who identifies as LGBTQIA. So I feel very blessed to live where we do. Although Montreal boasts one of the largest gay communities in the world, for 10-year-old Nemis, it's seriously lacking one type of person. There's a huge drag scene here in Montreal, and there's like a big, there's like, well, there's a Vogue scene, and there's a ballroom scene, but like, there's not many drag kids that, well, there's not drag kids that we know of. 
but for one weekend only, the drag kid population will be boosted by the arrival of newfound friend Leo and Fabian. Having met Nemis in Colorado, Leo and Lauren were keen to visit him in Montreal. Jessica and I really got on, and uh, Leo and Nemis, there was like a little bit of a bromance going on there. Along with Fabian and mum Rachel, they've flown in to understand how drag is being embraced by children all over the world. What was it like to meet up with Leo again? Oh, amazing. We get along like a house on fire. Hello, darling. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, darling. Let's go. Leo and Fabian are on their way to meet Nemis at a dance studio downtown. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yours hurts. Okay, here. Sorry. <laughs> it's been 10 days since Leo met Nemis at Dragutant, and Fabian has never met him before. To enhance their drag, the three kids will be getting a lesson from voguing ballroom legend Caesar Valentino. I'm Lauren, this one's mum. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Violet Dixon. At a time when drag wasn't widely accepted, ballroom offered a safe space and the scene gave birth to the dance style, voguing. The concept of ballroom and voguing was created to give people an opportunity to express themselves in a safe environment free of judgment, to feel validated, respected, as you were, right? So, voguing is an expression of self-appreciation. It's a feeling, it's an attitude. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's all about, this is all of me, take it or leave it. All right, y'all ready to do this? Scream so they hear you downstairs. Are you ready to do this? Kicks, kicks, turn left. Here we go, and turn left, turn left. Very good. Let's bring it back. Are we doing death drop? There's no such thing as a death drop. <laughs> it's called a dip, a lay out. It's about doing it with grace, not looking like I've fallen and I can't get up. If you hit the floor like a sack of potatoes, I don't know what magazine you saw that in, but that's the idea is to lay out like it's a photo spread. Ready to walk runway? Let's do this. Up. Let's go. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Your right foot should be in front. Caesar taught the boys the runway, and I thought that was a really fab experience. Um, you know, to be taught by someone you know as uh, big as uh, Caesar, it was just an amazing experience for them all. Fearless. You could see that they were just sort of like really into it and, and into themselves. Their expressions and the way that they stood, they stood taller. Um, and it was just really, really great. Walking faster. Walk a little faster. These kids are amazing. Their, their level of expression, their freedom. So young and just so bold and so fabulous. I lived and I experienced that, but in our world, in the ballroom world, and on the pier where we hung out, but to see parents present in this room, supporting their children and buying their clothing and helping them get dressed, I think it's a wonderful thing. So! So you guys, you say work, work. Work, work! Thank you guys, thank you, good job, thank you. Thank you. Over the next couple of days... What is it? It's a gradient! Lemis and Jessica want to show Fabian and Leo the best of what Montreal has to offer. We are in the gay village. It's the gayest place in Montreal. Montreal is the gayest place in Canada, and it's, it's, uh, it's perfect for us. Yeah! We don't have anything like this like, at home at all. I've, like, nothing so nothing. colourful and sexually liberal, maybe. I know my town, really, in my little town, so we've got just, well, a few cafes, a few charity shops, and that's really about it. <laughs> Honestly, there's nothing, nothing like I feel like very this. blessed, I think, to live here, especially with a gay kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And we always feel very safe coming here. Yeah. Always very well received. I just love it. I like that word. It's stunning. 
Let's go, go. No, it's <laughs> And the boys bond more through their love of drag. <laughs> this is our kind of like our go-to for when Nevis has drag shows and stuff, and we need costume pieces because they have like amazing, amazing stuff. So, oh, dad arms! It's just got a really nice vibe, and it's lovely for the kids to be in a place where it's completely acceptable to be the way that they are. You just feel really comfortable, you know, like even with early on Fabian you know, or walking around with the lipstick on or, you know, the earrings or anything like that, you know, you just sort of like, you know, just blend in. It's fab, it's really, really good. I was gonna get them. It's been really fun, like, having this experience with other people like me. Found friends along the way and I'll miss Jessica and, you know, nervous and everyone. This place. I'm a village. On their trip around the world, seeing how drag has gone mainstream, drag kids Leo and Fabian have landed in Benidorm. And along with their mums, are making their way to Stefan's apartment. I've got wigs, dresses. And Stefan is well prepared. I've even got this light-up outfit that kind of doesn't fit me anymore. It's the first time these three pioneering British drag kids have ever met each other. Stefan to meet the other kids, it's part of his dream, isn't it? It's part of him having a world just filled with drag. It's very... Mermaidy. There's one or two drag kids in Spain, but not in my area of Spain. So it is very, very lonely. What happens if you don't get on? There will be war. I was like, oh my gosh, what will he look like? Eee. I was literally on the floor rolling in a ball before they came in, and then when I opened the door... <laughs> Come on in! Hi! Hey. OK, go, go, right, go. right, play with whatever drag stuff you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The kids waste no time getting acquainted. Go on, touch whatever you want. <laughs> Don't be afraid. And for these boys, it all boils down to who has the best dresses. Steph has got tons of bloody drag stuff, it's literally it masks, 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 dresses, dresses, dresses. He's got at least like 60 old wigs. <laughs> 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 oh, Are you a bit jealous? Obviously I'm jealous, just a bit, just a little bit. No, 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 no. So, Stefan, what are your first impressions of Leo and Fabian? I love them. <laughs> it's like two different versions of me. Ooh, are they real babies? Yes. Do you want to see that other girls? Bristol girls. <laughs> With Benidorm pride looming, the boys begin their transformation. Try to sharpen it up at the edge, it's like hey, angle it more. What do you mean by angle it? Give me a foundation or a raw concealer. Right, look here. What are you doing? Um, um, hmm. The peace and quiet offers the newly acquainted mums the chance to compare notes. Obviously, over in Spain, how was people's reactions um, to Stefan compared to... Uh, it's, it's varied. The majority of uh, Spanish people are really, really accepting of him. Oh, are they? Kids as well as adults. English people here, it's one camp or the other. They either love him or they hate him. Yeah. How does he react to that? Like, what... So much better than we do. Yeah. He's yeah, brilliant. That's he, good. He sashes away, he sings, I'm your biggest fan to him. He's, he flicks his hair. 
Like at one gig we went to, he got stopped singing and that broke his heart, which, oh, that hurt me because that's all he wants to do is sing. Yeah. yeah. So it shouldn't matter that he's singing in a dress, but to these people it did. Oh, um, so but well. that was that was the point when he, when he realised he wasn't allowed to finish his set, that's when he started to cry. Oh, Up until that point, while they'd been abusive and horrible, he just got on with it. Just with yeah. weird. While they get ready for Pride, the boys are also comparing notes. Uh, my people in school have been like, they say, oh my god, Fabian's so gay. I'm like, oh my god, why can't you just shut your mouth before I smack you on? I've had somebody strangled my mum around the throat. <gasps> what? Just because I was wearing a dress. You should have just. Somebody told me. strangled your mum? Tried, tried to, and so then my mum, my mum's defence measures kicked in. As soon as, like his, she felt some skin, and then her, her hands were around like that. So then mum was like, "What? Her <laughs> dad? That's the that's the funniest thing. Everyone thinks it's always parents are forcing her." I know, it's like, yeah. oh my god, your parents are forcing you to stop her. I'm like, well, it's what we want to do. It's like child abuse, child abuse. Actually, it's parent yeah. abuse because we're abusing our mothers to, like, do this out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not easy, and it's not easy because there are lots of people that don't get it, so you can have a lot of judgement, you can have a lot of people looking in thinking that mum has no hold on their child. It's really hard to maybe sort of put up with their energy. But at the same time, there are so many sort of benefits in the terms that, you know, life's looks much more colourful because of those kids. With costumes and makeup finally complete, these three mini divas are finally ready for the parade. I think when Stefan meets other drag kids, it gives him strength. It gives him knowledge and knowledge is power. More than me and his dad could give, sitting at home going, you know we support you, whatever your decisions, but we can't give him that, the other kids can. Well, he's never experienced anything like this in his life. Um, like I said, you know, we'd just be at home, uh, he'd be performing in the house, uh, you know, just in front of me, his brother or his dad or his sister or something. For him to like, come out and show the world, you know, sort of what he's about. You know, it really, really means a lot to him. You know, that his confidence is growing and growing and growing, and it's just really, really nice to see. Do you think you made the right decision in allowing Leo to follow his instincts? Um, I think as parents, the only thing that we should be doing is allowing our children to follow their instincts and giving them that safe space to do so. Um, so, I don't think there's any question about whether I've made the right decision or not. What I will take away from it is the friendships, and I really hope that we get to sort of continue them.